depending on how much of that revenue flows back into individual incomes. Correct. We were, at first, we were looking at, um, now there are two pieces to the international. Um, but the piece, to your point, in that first year, there's this repatriation. If we are tied to it in such a way that it's a revenue gain, it could be a $100 million revenue gain in 2018. Sure. And, that, and in that sense, we're kind of at a wash for 2018. Yeah. The, um, I learned of a new interpretation just this week that would suggest that it might actually even be a revenue loss. And that would make 2018 worse. And if we can't say, we're at a point now where we don't know if it's a revenue gain or revenue loss, I didn't provide a number, because we I'm not in any place to make an estimate on that yet. How, how could it follow? Yeah, please. How could it possibly be a, a loss if we're going to repatriate income into the United States? And, and some of that's going to find though. its way into Oregon. The, the short answer is I don't know, which is why well, I'm still, why I haven't provided don't know, you shouldn't say. Right. And, but the, the information that I've gotten so far that it has to do with dividend reductions that state, state levels have, deductions for dividends received, that doesn't, don't exist at the federal level. And so that's why I didn't include a number here, because we don't know what it is, if any. We're still, we're still working on this piece. Two days ago, NCSL published a, a, a list of articles in their daily email. The first article said something like, the states are going to get a big windfall. The next article said the states are taking it in the shorts. Um, you, you get to pick at this point what you believe. But hopefully, uh, Chris will get us some more definitive information well, soon. Well, to, to, to be fair, it's hard because you don't know what international companies are going to do with that. It's coming back, but it could be invested in their own business instead of distributed as income and dividends to people. So. The uncertainty, one of, one of the challenges in our, in our role when we provide estimates is we're always dealing with uncertainty. Yeah. But sometimes we have manageable uncertainty, and then sometimes we just have crazy uncertainty. <laughs> it's somewhere in between. Please flag those, you know, when they show up. So we're <laughs> I'm, 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 not trying to be, I'm not trying to be flippant. Um, yeah. But on this one, I mean, it, it's significant. And um, yeah. the... So that's why you know we're talking with legislative council. We're talking with the Department of Revenue. The Department of Revenue is consulting Manageable. with the AG, and we have several. Yeah. So you may just comment. What I'd prefer you to do on something like this, instead of just exclude an extremely big variable, mm -hmm. which makes a big difference mm -hmm. on potential revenue forecasts in the state of Oregon for the next couple of years, do a sensitivity analysis of what your best guess is for that. But just to just to exclude a, a key proportion of uh, of the federal tax changes, I, I think it's a little disingenuous. Well, I don't know about disingenuous, but this information just came up recently about, okay, is it going to be a big gain or a big loss? And I don't have a way to characterize that uncertainty well, right now. As a sensitivity analysis, right? You can put the range of expectations instead of just instead mm -hmm. of just excluding it completely. Yeah. And we'll, we'll work on that for as we learn more and see what we can do to, to better refine that number. But at this point, and given the time frame and how fast we're learning things, all I could really do at this point was just flag it as an okay. issue. All right. Thank you. I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I will note there's a particularly delicious acronym in the middle of this page, the GUILTY acronym, um, which uh, describes my views about Taxation on global intangible low taxed income. Uh, what we were, what we've tried to deal with a, a couple of different occasions in Oregon and only partly succeeded. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, sorry, sorry. Bad, bad so, editorial so, comment. So, to your editorial comment, though, is this new system going to be better for us as we have tried to get at tax havens, the Netherlands, you know? Ireland, the that, Dutch sandwich. Now that's a substantive question. Does that, you know, does, does, do we get an advantage under this new system dealing with those problems? Yeah. Advocates of the policy would argue that we do, that the country does. But the, to take a step back, we're going from what's called a worldwide system to a territorial system. Yeah. And under a worldwide system, the key thing there was the residency of the corporation. So in a worldwide system, you're a U.S. corporation, we're going to tax your worldwide income. That's kind of the starting point. Right. And then from that, things only get more complicated. 
where you have the deferral. Um, if the money is earned in a foreign country and not repatri repatriated, it's, it's deferred income and not taxed. And then we have an exception to that exception that's generally referred to as subpart F income where we do tax that. But the, the key concept, I just, I, at this point, I just want to stick with the fundamental concepts here, is the residency piece that we start. If you're a U.S. corporation, we're going to tax everything, and then we get the exceptions. And with the, a lot of the exceptions being we're not going to tax the foreign income until it comes back to the U.S. With a